Hey, what's up? This is Václav. First of all, thanks so much for all your nice and positive comments you left me under the last video. All of them were very positive and all of them were encouraging me to carry on uh, in this channel. Now, the video was about, uh, I was thinking whether I should change direction into more sort of consumer market uh, product review or very simple how-to tutorial. So whether I should continue into this sort of more advanced niche automation ideas. Uh, and all of you confirmed that I should carry on. Some of you said that you might not understand everything initially, but you take it as an inspiration and it's helping you to, to grow and to improve. And this is when I got an idea. How can I help you in that? Because this is basically most of my audience. How can I help you to grow from the very basic and get better and being part of the home assistant community? And, and so this is what I'm going to do. I will create this five part series on home automation, on the home assistant automations. And uh, each of the uh, parts is going to take you one level up. So we'll start from uh, level one, which is going to be going to just use the basic built in blueprint that is available in Home Assistant. We're going to just configure it three clicks and that's it. Everyone who has Home Assistant should be able to do it. So we'll start there. But even for some of you, you might be afraid to use blueprints. So this is going to be a good starter for you. Then uh, from there, we will move to maybe not directly to level two, but to level one and a half. We will not uh, use the blueprint available in Home Assistant, but we will download and use one provided by the community. Because this is what's beautiful about uh, Home Assistant. This is what I love about it, that this is a community project. So there are different people who contribute and who create their own uh, ideas, blueprints, automations, and they share it with the others. So this is going to be level one and a half, if you like. Then from there on, level two, uh, we will create a basic automation, but we will not go into some scripting in YAML. What we're going to do is we will use the GUI, the graphical user interface of the Home Assistant uh, of a device, and we will just create very simple automation from provided scenarios. So it's very simple as well. But from then, we will start to a little bit more advanced level. So uh, I'm going to use the you, uh, I'm going to show you the scripting language. So all the different uh, things you can do when scripting, because I mean, during last year, the the automations or the scripting language has improved quite a lot. You could do loops, you could use variables, uh, you could use conditions, you could use quite a lot. So I'm going to show you uh, where you can find it and I will show you a few concepts. So this is going to be start to this sort of more advanced level. Speaking of advanced level, we will take it one level up and uh, we will dig into templates. So I'm going to show you how to do templates, how to try them, how to use the developers tools uh, and how to test templates in Jinja language. Uh, because this is, again, one of the beauties Home Assistant, because you can use those uh, expressions, for example, in conditions or uh, to build a, a return values to turn on different things uh, based on some prescriptive, well, templates, that's what they are. So this is the uh, level four, I would say. And finally, the level five, what we're going to do is we will build a template from all this automation and uh, we will contribute it back to the community. So we will kind of close the circle and uh, if you complete it all the way to this level five, you're going to become part of the uh, community of Home Assistant and you will be contributing and helping the others. So this is, this is the goal of this uh, five time series. So this was the idea I got and I wanted to start shooting right away. Uh, I was very sorry because uh, the day I wanted to start shooting, I got COVID. So I got uh, stuck for more than a week now and I can probably can probably still hear it in my voice that I'm still not fully recovered but uh, I think I'm fine now so I will uh, start as soon as I can which is today and we will start with this uh, level one in fact we're gonna start with level zero uh, because before we start uh, automating we will have to configure a, a sensor, a device, which is going to be triggering the automation. So I'm going to take one of those Sonoff motion sensors and we're going to add it uh, to the home assistant. So take it as a level zero. Let's get started. 
So the sensor is a Zigbee device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Zigbee to MQTT because this is what I use uh, for Zigbee. And then I'm going to enable uh, joining the network for new devices. So I'm going to click permit to join. So Zigbee is now allowing uh, new devices to join. So I'm going to just uh, take the device out of the box. I hope it's going to work. So this one I'm going to take put in here. And uh, how to do it? So I think I will. And I haven't I haven't read the instructions. So what I'm going to do is I will just open the open the device. Right, so there's no battery, so I'll need to get a battery first. Okay, so I have a battery now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, insert a battery and I'm going to close the lid and uh, if it's in the default factory mode it should basically, and here you go, it discovered the device, it started the interview and uh, if I look further down, there's our new device. I can click on it and it's it says it's supported, uh, it's discovered. It could be that if it was already configured for Home Assistant, it wouldn't discover it uh, automatically. So I could have taken uh, this pin in here, uh, which is like the full mobile phone taking out the SIM card. And I can just push this uh, through this little hole and hold it there for a couple of seconds and reset it. And uh, it'll do the trick as well. But I didn't need to do that, it was in a factory setting, so it's now configured. And I can now rename the device. I'm going to click on this blue icon. I'm going to say it's, gonna, it's our new motion sensor. I'm going to say update home assistant entity ID. And I'm going to save it. There you go. And now if I go to configuration, device and services, and now uh, in MQTT, it should have uh, the new device already configured. So there you go, new motion sensor. I can click on it, it's been automatically added. And after a few seconds, it should be up and running. So now we have our motion sensor installed in Home Assistant. So I didn't call it level one because it doesn't do anything. You can watch it if there's motion detected or not, but it's not gonna really help you, right? So now we can go to level one. We can uh, go to Home Assistant Blueprints Take the default blueprint for turning on the light based on motion, which is supplied by the Home Assistant. And let's configure it. Let me show you how. So this is the sensor. As you can see, it's currently not detecting any motion. And uh, let's use it as a trigger to turn on our lights. Uh, to show you how it works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this panel to the Lovelace, to the default dashboard the lights section. So I'm going to just add it to the Lovelace UI. So I'm going to switch to there. You can see there's a new panel automatically created called new motion sensor with those uh, two entities. I don't really need the second one, but uh, it's just there. So I'm going to leave it because it's temporary anyhow. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to configuration blueprints. And here I'm going to just sort it by name. Uh, there is essentially three blueprints that are delivered with Home Assistant. I have added some additional ones in the meantime, but you will probably have those three. Uh, there is one used for comfortable notification, which is actually a blueprint for a script. A script means it's similar to automation, but it's not triggered by anything automatically. You have to run it uh, yourself. Then. There is automation for sending notification when person leaves a zone. So you can, for example, get notified when someone arrives somewhere. Uh, so this is another one created by Home Assistant. But the one we're going to use today is a motion activated light. So this is the blueprint for an automation. And what we're going to do is we're going to just click on create automation. And here it's 
basically pretty simple. We have only four things to configure. In fact, two of them are sort of optional. One of them is we can name the new automation somehow. So by default, the name is motion activated light, the same as the blueprint. But if you have more uh, sensors or more lights to be activated, if we call all of them uh, by the default name, we wouldn't know which one is what. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call it by the light that I'm going to use it for. So I'm gonna use guest guest room motion activated uh, light. So here I'm going to choose the motion sensor uh, that we have just created. So it's gonna be this new motion sensor, the motion sensor we have just created recently. And finally, we can choose the light. So as I have said here, it's going to be the light in the guest room. So I'm going to choose the uh, guest room light. And this is pretty much it. We can save it and we are done. There's one more thing we can configure. There is a wait time. So this is a time uh, the automation is going to wait when the motion is not activated anymore before it turns off the light. By default, it's two minutes. And I can leave it on there, but for the uh, demonstration here, I'm going to just uh, turn it down to zero. So it will turn the light off as soon as the motion will uh, not be detected anymore. And the sensor has about a minute delay anyhow, so I think it's going to work fine for our demo. So I'm going to just save that and it's going to create the automation. And now we can test it. So I'm going to go to this uh, main panel and uh, the, there is a currently no motion, so the occupancy is clear and the light is off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my hand before this sensor and it should turn this light on. So let me show you. So I'm going to just take the sensor and there you go. I've moved my head. There's a detected motion and you saw the light turned on. So I'm going to just move it away and I'm going to wait for the sensor to stop detecting the motion. So it just take about a minute or so. So I'm gonna pause the video in here. And now you saw it stopped detecting the motion and the light went off uh, pretty much at the same time because we set the wait time for zero. Right, so that was not too difficult, was it? Now, let's take it to a next level. I call it level one and a half because we're gonna still use blueprint but this time we're not gonna rely on the blueprint that came with home assistant and but we're gonna download one provided by the community so what we're gonna do is uh, I'd like to see if I can uh, use the motion sensor to only work at night this particular motion sensor doesn't have a light level sensor so it doesn't tell me how dark it is so one of the options would be if I have another sensor of the luminosity, I could use that, but I don't have it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do it based on the position of the sun, which is a sensor available or entity available in Home Assistant. So let's see if I find blueprint that will only use the motion sensor to turn on the light if the sun is below the horizon. So let's do it. So we will start the same. I'm going to go to configuration blueprints but if I look through the blueprints there is no blueprint for motion activated lights with checking the position of the Sun it's just not there but if you look at the bottom of the uh, list there is a button discover more blueprints so let's try that I'm gonna discover more blueprints and it's gonna take me to the community home assistant that IO and indeed there's blueprints exchange. Well, let's try. Uh, so I'm gonna search, and I will search for motion, motion lights with sun. And I'm gonna search that in the blueprints exchange and see what comes up. So and the first one is turn lights on and off based on detected motion and sun condition. So that sounds promising. So let's click on that. And uh, this is it. This is a simple automation that turns light when there is a motion and turns off when there is not, but edit condition so that only triggers on in sunset. And it's possible to configure sunset and sunrise offset. So that looks exactly 
like what we need. So I'm gonna click on import blueprint. It's gonna open the link for importing a blueprint. So it's kind of the same as if you were importing the blueprint by this button here on the bottom and then pasting the URL uh, from this community home assistant IO uh, with this uh, post. So I'm gonna preview the blueprint uh, and in here this is the same blueprint as uh, was included in the post and I'm gonna import it. So it added that to the list of our blueprints so it's now available and from there on we can continue like before. Now before we start I still have the automation I have created earlier so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to configuration automations and I'm gonna go for the guest room motion activated light I'm gonna configure it and delete the automation so I'm gonna delete the one we created earlier and then I'm gonna go to blueprints and I'm gonna create a new one and it's very similar to the one before but there's some additional parameters so I'm gonna say again guest room motion activated light with some conditions I'm gonna leave it there Again, motion sensor, I'm gonna say, this is our new motion sensor. For light, I'm gonna select our guest room and uh, the wait time, I'm gonna set it again to zero. So it's all the same as the default one. But additionally, there is a offset for turning the lights on and off before the sunset and after the sunrise. So it's uh, one hour before sunset and uh, 45 minutes after sunrise. So I'm gonna leave it with that and I'm gonna save it. And as you can see by this additional line, it now created the automation and uh, we are all set. I'm not gonna test it because uh, I would have to wait 24 hours to check the position of the sun, but it should work exactly as the one before, but only uh, during the night. So that was easy, wasn't it? Congratulations. You reached level one right now. We automated things in Home Assistant without writing any automations because we're gonna do that in the second part of this series. So I'm gonna end in here and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.